welcome 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 back to the channel i'm kendra and i'm about to review the batman there will be spoilers ahead by the way so you have been warned you've been warned spoilers spoilers it's gonna be spoilers are you ready okay let's go okay so first of all i'm just gonna come right out and say it right off the bat i saw this movie twice in theaters once in like a regular theater and once in imax and both times they were incredible so you should know like right up front that i absolutely loved this movie i i think this might be my favorite batman movie no Okay, so the story, um, if you haven't seen uh, this movie yet or if you don't really know sort of what the story is, uh, Matt Reeves has directed this film and written it. He based this story on a couple of things, um, year one, uh, The Long Halloween, there's obviously a lot of source material to pull from but I believe specifically it's definitely those two and there are a couple of other things that I've heard people reference before but I'm not a Batman connoisseur, I do not know everything about the Batman character or his comic book uh, lore, um, every crevice of it so I can only really point to those two sources. Um, because I've, I've read those. And it was pretty uh, spot on, I, I would have to say. So the story is Batman is in his sort of like new stage. He's only been a uh, vigilante for like two years, I believe. He is still trying to figure out, um, he, he has kind of figure out what he's doing. He's obviously, he's the bat, he's instilling fear in the criminals of the city. You know, he, he uses the shadows, you know, he's, he's decided to be the arm of vengeance um, and he's been doing that for two years um, and we sort of like land on how that's been going for him. He's still very much in the middle of dealing with the trauma of losing his parents um, at a young age and uh, so that is obviously how it's been manifest. All sort of Batman origin story uh, 101. What I love about this um, in general is that there isn't much sort of time spent on showing us the origins that we are all used to seeing because I think we Pretty much get it. What they do spend time uh, on is setting up what kind of Batman this is. If we didn't already know from the trailers and everything and just from reading the comic books, like the opening minutes of this film not only sets up uh, the, the what Gotham City is going to be, this uh, dark, heavy, oppressive, even more dark and oppressive than I think um, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight. The Batman is doing his crime fighting thing. It's Halloween night. The mayor gets killed by none other than the Riddler. Who is the Riddler? Why is he killing these people? And why is he so keen on connect being connected with the Batman throughout his um, killing spree? Not Commissioner Jordan, Lieutenant Gordon calls on the Batman and obviously the uh, th this is not a point in the Batman's uh, uh, you know career where he's buddy buddy with the cops. He's uh, very much an outsider, very much a pariah, very much seen as a um, nothing but a, a crazy you know untrustworthy vigilante. So he and Gordon start investigating this uh, case. The Riddler's leaving all kinds of clues. It's very Zodiac. It's very Seven, which, you know, I've seen obviously a few people, including Matt Reeves himself, uh, sort of uh, allude to the fact that these, all of these films have been referenced and drawn upon and inspired a lot of this uh, stuff. And of course, Batman himself goes on this journey where he is, he goes from I have to make this city afraid of me in order to stop crime to there's a different way. Which is not, we've seen these themes come up before in, in Batman stories all the time, but the way that it was handled here, the way that Matt Reeves put this narrative together, this three hour narrative, was unlike any other uh, Batman's film that I have seen. And so let's go into why. So that's the story. The best parts of this film, the parts of the film that really got me, that got me going from, okay, it's a Batman film. We got a new Batman. What's up? What are you gonna do? To, whoa. Oh, this is really good. <laughs> Whew, okay. 
I obviously am a fan of horror movies. I, I, I love horror movies. It's like my favorite genre, aside from the superhero genre. And what really struck me about this film, especially as you get further along in the opening and you get to the part where um, the Riddler is about to murder the mayor, and the from the very first appearance of the Riddler, where he is just there in the shadows, like a damn demon in the night <laughs> and the light passes over him and his his glasses light up and he he scared it scared the shit out of me um and it gave me goosebumps and it and and i was there i was present from that like i was already feeling it but that moment in particular that really got me it was one of the reasons that i started to um really be curious about you know the use of Paul Dano and what Matt Reeves um, was gonna do because I had a feeling that it would be different and that was the moment where I was like okay yeah we're here Paul Dano as the Riddler um, I won't say that his performance was in any way unpredictable but it was riveting and it was chilling and it was very well done um, from his time in the in the mask where he's hunting and killing and breathing hard and making these guttural animal sounds while he's murdering the mayor and you know the way he moans you know um sometimes when he speaks when he's um you know ta uh, you know announcing the riddles and when he's speaking to batman later on all of that shit um was brilliantly executed um and both on the part of the filmmakers and the cinematography and everything which i'll get to and on the performance end of it like the the riddler as the villain in this movie mwah, i'm so glad that they went with him and they um did him the way that they did him I'll, i've seen people allude to seven's um serial killer played by um you know that guy <laughs> um and how calm and sort of resolved and focused he was on his end goal and how nothing um, anybody around him said or did was going to break him from that focus of his end goal and um, even to the way that um, it, serial killers like uh, um, Hannibal Lecter sort of like possessed this certainly unhinged but also very calm sort of I'm at peace with what I'm doing it's my calling <laughs> you know thing loved it um, I also really loved how still Robert Pattinson was. I'm sorry, you can probably hear my, there's a, people mowing the lawn out there. Anyway, um, I really loved how still uh, Robert Pattinson's portrayal of the Batman was. I loved that the only time you really heard him speak was in his um, monologues or voiceovers when he was writing in his journal. I'm trying to think, I don't think I've ever heard a live action Batman do a voiceover like that before and if they had done it in, a, in the wrong way it might not have worked but i really like the way um they did it you know just his sort of his resolve um from the beginning of the movie um through the way that he carries himself as batman and the way that you can tell throughout that he actually prefers being in the bat suit he prefers being in the darkness he prefers not saying um, but doing and, and observing. That is a stillness that I don't believe I've seen in any other live action Batman, live action Batman, except maybe Michael Keaton, but but he, but just in a different, in a different way. Um, I could really see the trauma in Pattinson's portrayal of the Batman in a way that I don't believe I've ever seen. Um, not even really with Christian, like Christian Bale's portrayal was deep and it was um, nuanced, but it was, it played the same strings I think I've seen before. Like, you know, the billionaire playboy, I have to pretend to be a playboy um, so people don't figure me out. But like Robert Pattinson was just like, yes, I'm rich, but I've got things to do, so <laughs> whatever. I thought it was interesting how you have a black man and a black woman symbolizing um, a the uh, sort of yang to Batman's yang, the, the, the partner that he um, doesn't have out in the streets working with him to solve this case, and the only person on the police force currently willing to 
see him for something other than a vigilante is um, the black man on the force. And then you have the black woman trying to upend the corrupt mayor's reign um, and at advising, um, you know, Bruce Wayne um, to maybe stop hiding and get more involved in the city and show the city a part of him um, that is more altruistic and more hopeful um, instead of just this lone figure, rich man hiding in his castle on the hill um, to her being the first person that he rescues when he changes tack and becomes a beacon rather than um, a, a, a symbol of fear. Gordon is always going to be Gordon and, and I, Jeffrey Wright obviously um, brought Jeffrey Wright I also want to give a, a shout out to Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Colin Farrell did a really good job. He was almost, he was unrecognizable. Zoe Kravitz did a really good job. I thought she, um, all of her scenes, um, she was just gorgeous. She exuded the kind of sex appeal and coolness, um, but at the same time, this deep sort of tenderness, this affection she had for her roommate, and you know that whole the whole drama with her illegitimate father and, and you know her wanting to exact her vengeance on on him um, that was all interesting and um, not wasted her story even though she was instrumental in in a way in helping him figure out a lot of the the mystery um, I don't think that her role was to this was not gonna be a, a Bat and the Cat movie. Um, and I'm glad that it wasn't a Bat and the Cat movie because we've seen that before and it's cool. She was there, they connected, they had chemistry. You know, she she helped move the plot along and then she was like, you know what, deuces. <laughs> I'm out because Gotham uh, is not for me. Will we see her again? I would. I hope so. I hope so. There are parts in here, of course, that everybody's in love with. The big car chase scene was amazing. Um, I don't even like car chases. I'm not. I don't care about those big action sequences. But this held me. I usually go to the bathroom. Like when there's a big action sequence like that, and there's like cars and, and you know there's explosions and shit. I usually get up and go to the bathroom because I know pretty much what's gonna happen. This time I did not do that. I stayed in my seat. I could feel the energy in the theater both times. In IMAX, it was like, you know, it was, it held my attention. And there were some really amazing shots and camera angles in there that I was like, okay. You know, like I was impressed. I was very impressed. And usually I don't give a shit. So I will applaud that fucking, is it a charger? It looks like a charger. I, I don't know much about cars, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that's a, a, a Dodge Charger. Um, and the only reason I know that is because I watched Drive and, and like Quentin Tarantino films, whatever. Anyway, um, and I also really enjoyed the only scene where we have the Riddler sort of in his demasked um, normal um, uh self talking to the batman as a really creepy fan um who, uh, who is just kind of like hey man <gasps> you know it was really good it was really good and in that scene like seeing it in the trailers you you know you you obviously don't get the full context and you don't know what's going on so like you know seeing batman reacting to the riddler in the trailers it was kind of like oh standard but in the scene, you get, you understand why um, the Batman is so angry. And it is kind of standard. It is kind of like, oh, the criminal sees me as, as you know, his counterpart, his partner, his pal, whatever. We've seen that before, but the way that it played out here and the way that um, the Batman slash Bruce realizes that that is what's happening, um, that he isn't this perfectly um you know 100 percent. i got it right all the time detective yet that he's still learning and still growing and still figuring out the kind of um anti-hero i guess for lack of a better phrase that he is going to be and it's people like the riddler who brings him face to face with the cause um of a lot of actions of 
a lot of the people in his life and himself. Um, I just thought it was really well done. And then of course the I Am Vengeance um, coming full circle from the beginning to the end when the Riddler's people throw it back in the Batman's face and he finally is like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. you know, like shit, <laughs> I haven't been doing it right. No, no, that's not what I wanted, you know. That was all, that was awesome. Coming to the realization that fear is not always the right tool, that is something that has popped up in Batman's story, you know, time and time again. Like, that's, that's Batman. But the way that they did it here, um, it just, it just made it so that there was everything in the movie and every interaction that he had with with the riddler's plot with the with the police with the with the criminals with the you know all of that stuff it made it so that that moment the the guy saying that and the look on his face when he hears it it all it it hits him but it hits the audience um so it was very well done i i really i really enjoyed it. room for improvement I mean, I, I mean, it was three hours long, but I didn't really feel it until maybe the second time. Um, but it, but it, it's also one of those things where you know the Lord of the Rings films are three hours long, but I, I love those goddamn things. I watch them all the time. You know, the movie is constantly moving. I don't believe that there's any um, wasted time in those three hours. It's just it's three hours. There, I know that there are people complaining sort of or like on the fence about the big spoiler you know appearance of the joker or who we are led to believe or i, be I think it's implied as the joker but certainly you know i don't think there's any real question i mean maybe some people might be on the fence but i'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's the joker um whether or not he belongs there if that scene was necessary if it's a good idea to continue on with a now third jerk joker in, in, incarnation um in, in a few years um i don't really care i like the actor um that they uh cast barry kagan i think he's a good actor and i think that he was creepy and effective as the joker um you know the joker's the joker bro like how many different ways can you do the joker He's gonna be the Joker. Um, and what I think Matt Reeves' job, the challenge that he has set for himself, obviously, since he chose to include this, is giving us a Joker that is just as memorable as this Batman that he has just given us. Can he do it? And this Batman, like, match what he's done with this Batman and Riddler with the Joker? I don't know. But I'm open to seeing it because he's convinced me I'm on board now um, with his vision for the Batman. I'm completely on board. So if he decides to go down the Joker route, my hope is that he would find a way to do it in a way that surprises us and makes us feel like it's right, like it belongs, like it fits the way that I know I have felt and I know a lot of other Batman fans have felt. You know, Batman fans who obviously have way more knowledge and experience than I do with the character I have seen really appreciating this portrayal. That's really all the room for improvement that I have for this movie. Okay, um, final T. I absolutely love this movie. And I think that if you can, you should go see it in theaters. Pattinson might be my favorite Batman now behind Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is always gonna be my favorite Batman. I don't think anybody's gonna knock him off his pedestal for me personally, but Robert Pattinson has surpassed other incarnations of Batman for me. Yeah, Robert's got that edge, baby. He's got that edge. And it was in part because of his stillness and because of his silence, because there wasn't, they didn't, he didn't need to say a whole much. And what he did say was very effective. Um, and it, and it made me believe him. I believe this motherfucker. This movie has made me more curious about this character than I have been in a long time. And that I think is its ultimate credit, especially for fans like me. So that is my review of the Batman. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, what do you guys think? I'm sure you have a lot to say. Um, let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I really appreciate you sticking with me. And we will see you guys next time. Bye.